Hey everyone, in this video I want to show how you can use certificate authentication for the Office 365 modern authentication that I showed in a video a few weeks back. I'll leave that linked in the description below. Uh, if you haven't seen that video already, I definitely recommend watching the first half of that. That kind of gives a brief overview of how to use uh, modern authentication in CSM 10.1 with Office 365. Uh, the second half of that video is about uh, G Suite, the, the Google version. So if you don't care about Google, uh, just just watch the first half of that video and then come back here uh, and I'll show you how to uh, use use certificates. So let me switch to my, my screen over here. So I have uh, I, I've already created a certificate. It's actually a self-signed certificate. Um, I didn't want to go through the the, the whole process of uh, getting a fully signed certificate from a certificate authority. Uh, and it turns out that for this case, it actually works just fine with the self-signed certificate. Um, you don't actually lose any security um, because in this case, it's using the uh, certificate as more of a handshake uh, than a, a way of determining validity of one endpoint or the other. Uh, so the security of, of SSL and how SSL works and why SSL works is definitely outside the scope of this video. Um, if you're interested in that, leave a comment below and I'll do a video on that. Uh, but for our purposes, self-signed certificates are perfectly fine because what we really need is a public key and a private key. That's that's the important part. Uh, so I've used OpenSSL. Uh, you can use you know whatever whatever technology you want to create your own self-signed certificate, um, but I've created it using OpenSSL, and then I did have to uh, convert the uh, certificate into uh, PKCS12 format, PFX format, for, um, for ShareWell to use it. And apparently for this video, we'll be joined by my cat. So, Let's uh, let's get into it. So just like with the other, um, sorry, just like with the other video, we have to go to Azure Active Directory, uh, and I, I've already pulled that up here. Go to App Registrations, and click New Registration. And now you could call it whatever you want. Uh, let's just call it Sharewell Mail. Uh, the other defaults are just fine. Click register. Then we'll need some of this information in a minute, but first let me go over to certificates and secrets. We'll click upload certificate and I'll select that that certificate that I created. Now on the Azure side it does actually uh, work with with the pen file so we'll pick the cert. This needs to be the public key or in other other parlance, it's a certificate. So this dash key is where I save the private key. Here is where I save the public key or the certificate. So that's what we need to upload uh, to Azure. So click open and add, and it, it imported just fine. We see a thumbprint here. We are ready to go. Uh, let's add our API permissions. Uh, just for the sake of this video, I'm going to go super quickly. Uh, you can see the exact details of what this needs to be uh, in the other video. Again, link down in the description. So I'll just click Add Permissions, Grant Admin Consent for the directory, and we're good to go. Now we can start copying all the information that we need. So we need the client ID and then we'll go over to the admin tool, go over to email event monitoring, edit email accounts and settings, add a new exchange account, we'll say O365 with cert, use credential based authentication, the user is again the um, email address that we want to send or receive from and then we'll go over to credentials 
add a new credential. We'll call it the same thing, O365 with cert. It is an Office 365 Modern Authentication credential. Go over here. This is where we paste in the client ID, which is what we just copied. We'll switch back over to Azure Active Directory for the tenant ID. And now, in the last video, I chose Use Secret. But here, I'm going to choose Use Certificate. And notice this Import button uh, shows up. I'll click Import. And I'll select my P12 or PFX file. Uh, it actually has the extension P12 because that's how I created it. So I'll choose all files from, from this drop down, choose the P12 file, open, and you do have to create it with a password. So you can't, if you're using OpenSSL, you can't use like the dash no DES uh, option to not encrypt the, the private key. So uh, I used a super simple password here. Say OK. You can see it imported successfully and it's valid for 365 days. I haven't actually tested this with what happens after the certificate expires. Um, it's possible that it might not work anymore. It's possible that it just doesn't care about the expiration date and really only cares about the public key, private key matching. Um, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll find out in uh, September 2021. Uh, but keep in mind that it is a certificate. Uh, it does have an expiration date. That might be an issue when the certificate expires. So let's click this test button. We get success there. OK, we can save the credential and select it in the manager. And now let's make sure all our settings here are, are set up. So we'll go over to From Settings and add the email address that we want to send from. as a legal from address. Everything else looks good. Let's click test account and everything should work. Sending email, trying to read email, and just like that, it successfully sent and read the email, all using the certificate and not using a shared secret. So that's how to uh, set this up using the certificate. Um, if you found this video helpful, go ahead and leave a, a like. Uh, be sure to subscribe to the channel and uh, you know, definitely give it a like for my cat, right? Everybody loves cats. So go ahead and leave, give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.